Now here we have a kinetics rate law problem where we're given a set of experimental data. We're given concentrations of reactants and we're given initial rates of the reaction as they go. Now I've made some annotations on here and we'll get to that in just a second. But here are the questions. First off, we want to know what is the rate law for this equation? So what does it look like? It does it look something like this. The rate is given by the rate constant times concentration raised to some power. Now we don't know what this power is going to be here just by looking at the equation. We don't. We have to actually do an experiment. But many times when we have this data here our instructors are kind to us and they arrange the data in a way or perhaps we do the experiment in a way that actually makes it very easy for us to determine the rate law for the reaction. And what you do is you, is you try to keep pairs of concentrations constant and do something simple like if you can double the concentration and we did there we kept BF3 boron trifluoride constant and we halved or doubled whichever way you want to look at it uh, the concentration and if we double the concentration we can see just by looking at it that 2.2130 is twice 0.0165 so therefore when we doubled the concentration of ammonia we ended up doubling the rate and at that that means that if this was a 2 there then 2 to the first is a 2 and so that means that it must be first order with respect to ammonia similarly we look for another pair which is like right here where we hold ammonia constant this time and this time we double the concentration of boron trifluoride and what happens well, once again, when we double the concentration, this time of the boron trifluoride, the reaction rate doubled, the initial reaction rate doubled, and therefore boron trifluoride is first order. And we can confidently write down that the rate law looks like this, where the rate is equal to the reaction rate constant, the concentration of boron trifluoride to the first, and the concentration of ammonia to the first. Now the question arrives is, what if you don't have these nice, neat relationships? What do you do then? Well, first off, maybe it's not practical to double the concentration, but you should be at least able to co hold something constant. And here's an example right here. We held the concentration of ammonia at 0 0.100 and 0 0.100, but we didn't increase it by a factor of two or decrease it by a factor of two. It's like by about a factor of one and a half thereabouts. Okay, so what do you do? And even if it wasn't a very neat, not even one and a half, what if it was, what if it was by, by 1.397 or some arbitrary number? Well, you can figure it out. And the way you do that, if you have this situation right here, we, and you don't have where you can ins inspect it like we did over here with times two times two and we got times two. Well, you can write it out in a general sort of way where you say the rate is given like this. You have the rate of your first concentration and then you have your BF3 to some arbitrary power and you have your concentration of ammonia to some arbitrary power. Remember, we, we, this, is, this is assuming we didn't have this information over here times two times two. And so we don't know this yet. And this is for concentration one and concentration one. And we can divide that by a second set of concentrations to the x and the only requirement is, is that we hold one of these pairs constant which is what we did right here we, we held ammonia constant at point 0.1 and all we changed was the concentration of BF3 and so anything that's a constant we can cancel the rate constant's not going to change so the only thing that's changing is your rate and it's going to depend on the concentration of your boron trifluoride at two different concentrations and you have two different rates and so what we can do is we need to get this exponent out because that's going to be our rate or our rate order with respect to boron trifluoride and what we can do is just take the natural log of both sides and if we take the natural log of both sides we go ln 
rate one over rate two. And by taking the natural log of this side, we pull out the x in front of the natural log. So this is x times the natural log of your boron trifluoride concentrations, the first one, and the second one. And then if we solve, now we can just solve for x, and it's ln of rate one, rate two, divided by ln of the first set of concentrations divided by the second set of concentrations. And if we were to plug in these concentrations up here, this will give us x, we in fact get 1.12 if you plug those in. So x will equal 1.12, which is pretty doggone close to 1. And so our rate order with respect to boron trifluoride is first order, just like we determined by inspection up here. We can do the same thing for the other one as well. Okay, so you can just use your natural logarithms if you have to do that. So what's the overall order of the reaction? Well, we determined that the rate law in the previous part of the problem, the rate was given by the reaction rate constant times BF3 concentration to the first power and ammonia also to the first, first power. So the overall order is the sum of these two things. So one plus one equals two. So the overall order is two. The reaction is overall order second order. Finally, we want to calculate the rate constant with proper units. Now there's two ways you can do this. We know it's second order uh, overall and we know what is first order with respect to each one. Uh, you can either take a pair and solve for K pair of concentrations. Take any one of these rates, any pair of these concentrations, and just solve for k. And strictly speaking, you could solve for k for each one. It should be the same k, but you got five of them. You can get a better k just by simply averaging, or you can gra or you can graph this. I'm just going to go ahead and just take a pair of these guys, and let's just take the first two here. So our k is going to be equal to uh, the rate divided by the concentrations. And that's going to be a rate of 0 0.2130 moles per second divided by uh, 0 0.250 molarity and also 0 0.250 molarity. And we put this in our calculator and we get 0.213 divided by parentheses 0.25 times 0.25 close parentheses equals and I get 3.408 and the correct units is going to be one of these M's is going to cancel so the correct units is per molarity seconds. Finally we're asked well what's going to be the rate if we have these specific concentrations of 0.1 mol molarity and 0.5 molarity and so once again the rate is given by K, boron trifluoride, ammonia, and we found our K previously and it was 0 0.2130 per molarity seconds. And what's our concentration? 0 0.10 molarity. And we have 0 0.500 molarity. And we just need to put it in our calculator. 0.2130 times 0.1 times 0.5 equals 1.07 times 10 to the minus 2 moles per second. 